Top 10 lists are fun, but the top 10 quarterbacks probably aren't going to be who you're drafting, taking those early round capital. You need to know who are the best quarterbacks, the best schedules from the quarterbacks 11 through 20, and we cover them on today's episode. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm -hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Friday time. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday time. August 14th. As a great man once said, it's Friday time. Oh, okay. You're quoting yourself from a moment ago. I said a great man. Uh-huh. No, I heard <laughs> Did you. Did I not? <laughs> Did I stutter? <laughs> Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, back with you Friday. Oh, that means the weekend comes tomorrow, which means we get to sleep. Maybe. I've heard good things about sleep <laughs> this past I'm week. I'm looking into it. Yeah. We had a couple of shows, well, the past two days. We had the podcast in the morning, and we had the footcast. In the evening. And then we had the podcast. At supper time. Then we had the serious show. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now we've got the podcasting. Oh, so This much. is the podcast, right? So right. much footballing. <laughs> uh, that's because things are ramping up. People are getting excited because football's on the way. As they should. I mean, I'm I'm really re – look, we're all Suns fans here as oh, well. Oh, gosh. But NH just, NHL yesterday, Suns today. Yeah, I mean, look, as, as a sports fan, our team, if you're not aware, if you're not into the basketball, our great team. Incredible. Incredible team. Undefeated. That was invited to get into the playoffs. Went undefeated and didn't get in the playoffs. But the point that I'm making has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the unfathomable level of passion – that me and my boys were watching a basketball game with. I mean, when football kicks off, yeah, whoo you better not be no camera on me during these games because I went nuts last night. I deleted UDK access for all people <laughs> from Portland. As you should, as you should. Damian Lillard definitely doesn't get a UDK. He, he had bought one. We removed access. He probably has his own. Dra football draft kit? Uh, probably. He's good. If he wanted to, he could. Shooting from half court, you jerk. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> back to the show. We have quarterbacks on today's episode, the second quarterbacks rankings episode. Uh, some news to talk about. And as Mike said, it's Friday time. Foot Clan Friday. Uh, I'm going to make this segment more interactive this year. Uh, we have the Foot Clan Friday giveaway, and if you're a supporter of the show over at jointhefoot.com, you get a, uh, dare I say, plethora of benefits from such support. You dare. Uh, but every Friday, we give something away, and I'm going to interact with Brooks, because people want to hear from Brooks more often, maybe. Somebody might say that. And uh, he's responsible for finding our sweet, sweet giveaway every Friday. And what do we have for our listeners today, Brooks? Ooh, do it us. in a Price is Right voice. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks just took a dump. Right. He just dumped it. You can seat. do it in your voice. And Amari Cooper signed mini helmet. Uh, okay. Amari Cooper signed mini helmet. The winner is Jeff Delotel. Oh, I'm sorry, also, Jeff, that you had to win an Amari Cooper helmet. Oh, oh stop, stop it. It's a wonderful, wonderful somewhat good, somewhat bad, some weeks gift, okay? And uh, 
Pristine Auction, supplying these sweet giveaways every week. You can use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. You get $10 off your first sports memorabilia item. Uh, Jeff doesn't have to pay for his. He doesn't need the coupon. It is free. Well, he's going to want more. I mean, that's just true. It may be a gift for others or whatever. So use the code BALLERS. Make Mike sure would that need it to buy something else immediately to replace. Yeah, well, you know, it's like sometimes you take a bite of a sandwich and like, ooh, that was bad, and you need to wash it do, down. Do you have that experience a lot? Well, I mean, don't a, you make the sandwich? No. No, I don't uh, make my own food. <laughs> that's the <laughs> chef's job. <laughs> and that, that's, you go to the aviary we, while he we, brings you the food. We that's established right. I am a great man. <laughs> oh, my God. Great. I make great sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be a special one today. <clears throat> uh, I did not use the main Twitter account to share my grievances from the Suns missing the playoffs I'm last so night. I'm a little surprised. Uh, I did use my own account. Yes. Andy Holloway, Jason's at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. The main account at the FF Ballers. We keep that professional. <laughs> <laughs> we would never uh, say anything about basketball on there. Mm -hmm. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. YouTube. You can watch this show. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe. Click that bell because the time is now. And then if you subscribe to the podcast or to the YouTube or anywhere else, fresh content is arriving daily, sometimes a little too often, honestly. So you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, ad-free on Stitcher Premium. So we appreciate everybody supporting the show. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, the Kansas City Chiefs feeling a little bit like the Los Angeles Rams of, of last year, where they have infinite money to sign infinite players. Well, they did they did begin this offseason with $141 in cap space, and that is not an exaggeration. I thought that was a joke. No, they had $141. Um, somehow, <laughs> they have signed... Oh, uh, Ten-year deal to Patrick Mahomes. Half a billion-dollar deal there. Chris Jones paid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can pay your stars when apparently when you uh, win the Super Bowl, they uh, they slide, slide some a, money under the <laughs> under the rug. Take that one forty-one, double it up. Yeah. Got but, almost three hundred dollars for the cap space. They've been pretty clever with their future cap usage. What this means for fantasy is really related. I didn't even say who signed. Oh, you didn't. Travis Kelsey, a four-year extension on the heels of the Kittle deal, but go on. So he's under contract now for six years, and where this matters for fantasy is in your dynasty leagues. You might be looking at, you know, if you're a Kelsey owner, you're worried about, okay, you know, he's he's great, he's dominant, but when do I capitalize on the, uh, on the talent and, and move him? The fact that he has more years, it, it really does matter. It moves the needle for me as far as confidence long term. Zach Ertz is great. Zach Ertz is a little bit younger, but he doesn't have a contract now. And when he comes up for as far as, you know, a, a long term contract, when that comes up, the cap space of the team might just dictate that they've got to move on to Dallas Goddard. But we know that Kelsey will be the guy until his legs stop working. Well, and, and George Kittle just signed a contract extension. And the difference when you look at these two players in terms of who do I rank number one, who do I rank number two, it's like, you know, Kittle got the butt tap yesterday. Kelsey comes out today, gets the butt tap. Like the they're, difference is, they're just two peas in a pod here, didn't? Because we had the situation where like, Kelsey had the record, the yardage record yes. for a tight end, and then Kittle broke it like an hour later. Oh, something. was it that direction? I thought it was, I can't remember off the top. I, my of my memory is that Kittle. I can vet it. Yeah, but, you vet it. I, but one of them definitely K broke Kittle the record. Kittle had the br the broken record in the end. Oh, he did. Okay, yeah. well there you go. Yeah, but I mean, you're right. These are two. It's nice to have these extensions for these foundational tight ends and you know they're the two players that you look at in fantasy drafts and you kind of if you want to take the shot on them you know what you're getting right outside of injury it's kind of bona fide for both of those yeah, tight ends absolutely all right uh we laughed a little bit new england patriots running back lamar miller joined sony michelle on the pup it was very bizarre upon signing i yeah. feel i want to believe that he went you, we've seen hard knocks we've seen the signing room I want to believe he went and signed it, and then he was let off to the pup. Like, the pup is a physical place to go to. Right. The, and Sonny the Michelle's room. there. You go to the pup room. Yeah, you, you, we're going to take you right over to your regularly scheduled PUP. 
I like to think he signed his contract, got up, turned around, and oh my no, knee! He, <laughs> no, no. Uh, the, he the probably re- signed it sitting, like you would have. The reality yeah. here is that's uh, not great news for his recovery. Um, you know, he was brought in basically as an insurance option because of Sony Michelle's recovery. So Ben Cummins just put out a an article uh, on the fantasy footballers that was contrarian yeah i was surprised about it i checked the date on it i know because it was it it was uh yesterday or the day before yesterday certainly before this news but he was he was pulling for damian harris as a good late round dart throw and then with this news yeah you got to keep your eye on him maybe he's on something yeah these two injury plagued veterans ahead of damian harris it's not like rex burkhead is an injury plagued in his own right right Smoke screens for the Damian Harris late round. Like, would you take him at the very, very back of a draft just to see what happens in week I w- one? I would be willing to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Es- especially now. I mean, it, we had the smoke of the running back coach talking up Damian Harris and his ability, and like some other uh, respected minds who are you know NFL guys who b- break down film and have said Damian Harris is very good. He's probably better than Sony Michelle. I mean, you get a little. The draft capital thing starts to infect your mind a bit and the fact that he couldn't get on the field last year. But yes, you need to be paying attention to training camp uh, or if you're drafting right now, I would I would take the shot on Damian Harris before the ADP goes up. And I'll, I'll piggyback one more story. Just the hype train, at least in my mind, is moving for Cameron Newton. Oh, Welcome sure. aboard, my friend. <laughs> Well, it, it was, uh, it's just been very positive out of uh, New England Patriots camp. Cam is a dominant personality. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, some people were talking about the fact that Ryan Pace in Chicago couldn't bring Cam Newton in. Oh, yeah, because he would be the starter. He would he swallow have, he Mitchell Trubisky. He would have devoured Trubisky, Trubisky yeah. yes. All the, all the other Bears players would be like, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Jared Stidham is like, yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah, because Cam is awesome. Like, you know, yeah. he's he's an outlandish personality, but he's also fun and and charismatic and and he's smart. He's a wins. smart guy too. Yeah, and he wins. And and Bill Belichick had some comments yesterday just about him coming in, and he's learning the system, but his competition is Jared. Didn't Stidham. he call him like a hardworking kid or something? <laughs> like, something <laughs> yeah, like they're that. all this kids is, to Bill. Yeah, Bill's he's a little bit old. Uh, <laughs> Cam Cam Newton has been, you know, my favorite later round guy. Yeah, you've for taken a bit. him a few times in our mock drafts, and I'm feeling more optimistic about his his opportunity and and delivering fantasy value. I mean, he's always done it. We still don't know what the running totals will be for Cam, and I think it's a fair like caution for fantasy owners to have. It sounds like they have some running back problems <laughs> that could be solved by a healthy Cam Newton. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be interesting in New England. All right, let's uh, let's jump back into the main event. Quarterbacks. The important quarterbacks, deep voice announcer guy, because <laughs> these are... Look, we talked about the best quarterbacks last episode, and some of them are being drafted late, but most of them are being drafted early. Now, that's one through ten. One, yeah, so it's top ten list. That's how, yeah. It's one through ten. <laughs> um, but yeah, today we're talking about the the back half of the top 20 quarterbacks, and these are the guys that you're probably going to draft in your league. If you if you adhere to the late round you quarterback. It's probably who we're going to draft. Right. It's certainly, you know, I like Come drafting my for quarterback. The ride. You know, usually I'm in the double digit rounds, and, you know, you've got to find someone. Stafford could be there from the top 10 episode for sure, probably will be. Yeah. But a lot of these players. Uh, especially the first one we're kick, kicking off with, are still going later in some drafts and I think have high upside. And why is this so important? Well, there were 40 different top 12 quarterbacks last season. But but Andy! Yes, yes. But there's only 32 NFL teams! I know. Confounding, isn't it? 40 top 12 quarterbacks. Uh, we're talking about names like A.J. McCarron, Matt Schaub, Matt Moore, Jeff Driscoll. But, oh. but Andy! Yeah. He's got play. That's an out liar season that's the only time that's happened you're right voice of public opinion except for in 2015 there were 40 2016 there were 40 2017 there were 43 2018 there were 41 i think i was wrong 
<laughs> the humble voice of public opinion. You've been put in your place. I gotta go. <laughs> Sound like a Muppet baby. I feel like I started to sound like what's the the poop guy from <laughs> Mr. Hank? Yeah. Oh my How goodness. The hell? Oh, d- thank you, Mike. You're uh, welcome. Also, never again. Um, no, five five consecutive years with forty or more top twelve quarterbacks. Now, it's not going to be easy to predict the Matt Moore, Jeff Driscoll climbing into the top twelve weeks. What it means is that there are that's a huge number. Which means that on a weekly basis, and if you look at matchups, if you look at opportunity to move quarterbacks into your starting lineup, it's very, very possible to stream the position. And year after year after year, we do a stream uh, where we each pick a, a quarterback to stream every week, and we've done it for years. And on average, that quarterback has finished as the quarterback six. So you can use that early draft capital on positions that you start more of. And you can look towards the back of the draft for quarterbacks that, you know, in this case, when you're looking at your draft, you're probably, you're glancing at that early season schedule yes. when you make a decision about a streaming quarterback, right? For, for sure. I mean, there are guys, you know, I, we brought up uh, Daniel Jones, a guy that could have a breakout year yeah, this year. I like Some him to break out. But- really believe in him, but his early season schedule says he's off my draft board. Like, I'm not. I don't want to start him those first couple weeks because of his schedule. And I, whoever I'm drafting, sure, you hope. You hope all of a sudden he has this breakout Lamar Jackson year and you start him the entirety of the year. But you assume when you draft these late-round quarterbacks that you're going to start him for a couple weeks, be watching the waiver wire, and pivot to a great matchup and, and be streaming the position. Top drafted quarterbacks last year, very disappointing. Nine of the first 10 quarterbacks selected in the 2019, in 2019 drafts finished lower than where they were drafted. So that is, that's all the players that even, you know, yesterday we're talking about the top 10 and the guarantees, nine out of 10, you know, finish lower. So, you know, what's wild about quarterbacks is they are very difficult to project on a season long uh, scope, but weekly, it, it's much easier when you have data on the matchups. And that's why guys like, like Jeff Driscoll, you go, oh, look, I get it. Maybe he's, maybe he stinks. I don't care. He's oh, because he's playing against a defense that stinks. Yeah, and I this sounds really dumb to say out loud, but all of these teams they play four quarters and they play the same amount of snaps. And if you're a bad team, you still play four quarters and you still have the opportunity to have X amount of possessions in the NFL. And that means any quarterback can come even, you know, we're talking about Tyrod Taylor in the in the Chargers and their offense being a question mark. Well, you still are going to have opportunities and in today's NFL, look, every single year, 40 guys put up top 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady comes in at number 11. Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course. And uh, his current average draft position a little bit higher than where we have him, the quarterback nine in the eighth round. Where you have him. Where where where, where you guys oh, have I him. See. I see. I see. Because you have him at nine. That's right. And you'd like to brag about that. I believe in Tom Brady. <laughs> This year, I think that's that, right. I got him right on ADP. We don't, you want to fight about it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm excited. I nine too <laughs> for Tom Brady's nine's my sweet spot outlook, and I feel like I am higher in my heart than nine. And my point is this: we've talked about it a little bit. I don't remember which shows at this point. They all run together, but Tom Brady did not leave the New England Patriots to be a game manager. For a good defense with, you know, just to in slightly improve his weapons. He went to Tampa Bay to Bruce Arians to one, the, one of, if not his best receiving core of all time to a system that wants to air the ball out. And he's he wants to flex. He wants to go there and show, I'm Tom Brady. I'm the best quarterback and in I the league. I want it now. <laughs> I want it now. That's what we're going to see. That's Look, what I believe. Well, and, and, and I, I, I've said this on this show. You're not going to get an, a medium season from Tom Brady if he still has it. Now, narrative street of, hey, I'm Tom Brady. I want to come and, and flex. It worked for Peyton Manning in Denver for a year. 55 touchdowns. It was nice. <laughs> it also didn't work. Peyton Manning, I'm, I'm going to break some news to you. He didn't want to be a game manager the year that they won the Super Bowl. Right. He became one he because his to. body said, you're a game manager now. So it, it's just to say that the risk with Tom Brady – it's built. The age is built into that risk. I mean, and you're not paying a high price for him. Well, you're shaking your head. How crazy is it that Manning won the Super Bowl when he was so bad? 
He led the league in interceptions. He wasn't a, if he was a game manager, he was a terrible game manager throwing picks left, right, and center. And he won the Super Bowl that year. Just, Thanks, defense. It just tells me that I could have done it. I could have yeah. done it. Yeah, B League flag football yep. champ quarterback. My concern with Tom Brady is the Bruce Arian system, while it uh, rains fantasy points down upon all of us, the first year that quarterbacks are in the system, they end up turning the ball over a lot. Now, I know we're, I'm comparing some guys to Tom Brady, which is a difficult thing to do of the or probably the greatest quarterback of all time, but Andrew Luck, it was his rookie year, but Andrew Luck, that's the most interceptions that he threw. Carson Palmer, his first year with Bruce Arians, the most interceptions he'd ever thrown. Jameis Winston last year with his first time or his first year with Bruce Arians, he threw a whole bunch of picks too. Like it's it and it's not so it's not just one quarterback who's coming in in the first year for Bruce Arians and struggling a bit. Do you think so, that that he's bringing Tom Brady along in his system as much as Brady is bringing his system along the way they did in Denver because other than uh, unlike Jameis Winston who needed to follow as much as possible Brady needs to do what he's comfortable doing at the same time I, I think there's a little bit of meeting in the middle there but from the reports out of camp it's talking about how well Brady has been picking up this system it really okay. does seem like it's going to be Bruce Arian's system but it's still Tom Brady's mind and decisions on the field now to your point Mike I have Tom Brady with 14 interceptions which is, you know, that's an outland. That's like double what Tom Brady is used to throwing. Uh, so I do think he'll turn the ball over a little bit more in this system. But he's going to throw the ball a lot. He's going to throw to great weapons. Mike Evans, you know, Chris Goblin. He's got Gronk. He's got OJ Howard. I, I, you know, I there's look, upside here. Yes, there is. I don't think that quarterback nine is where Tom Brady can really end up. I mean, I think he can be a top five guy with these weapons. You know, we talk about let Russ cook. You wonder how long Brady's been restrained by the weapons and the offensive scheme with Bill Belichick because it just worked, right? The defense and, you know, he didn't have weapons like Chris Godwin, like Mike Evans in New England. It, let Tom cook. The The last thing I'll say on well, Tom Brady. I think you're just getting a salad. That's the, true. The, yeah, that's true. The plant man. <laughs> Look what I got for you, some roots. <laughs> yeah. Um. The last thing I will say is at, at – quarterback nine you know I have him there I think he can beat that but we, we have brought up the the risk of the age and the changing team there is you know it, it's it's not a safe pick I don't I don't look at this as as a safe pick it's an exciting pick sure well let's talk about the schedule though I was gonna say New Orleans to start the year you it's gonna be fun you start on the road playing against the Saints then you get a nice matchup against the Carolina Panthers but then you get Denver and the Chargers. Nah, it, it doesn't bother me. I, it, that's, okay. not, that's not a big worry to me either. I mean, New Orleans is going to score a lot of points. It's probably going to be a high-scoring game. Carolina week two. I, I, I'm, I'm not worried about these, these matchups. All right, Aaron Rodgers. Yes, Aaron Rodgers comes in at number 12. And we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers. Right now? In a moment. Ah, yes. Before we get into Aaron Rodgers, I want to thank today's sponsor, Quip. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've followed this podcast for any amount of time, you know that Quip loves this show, and we love Quip. My entire family is outfitted with Quip electric uh, toothbrushes. Is that how you would say it? I believe so. Because I almost went with teeth brushes, but that would that would <laughs> that not doesn't work seem out. right. It would be bad pronouncing. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, uh, Quip knows that good health starts with good habits, and Quip makes it easy for you to brush and floss better like you compare it with their anti-cavity toothpaste uh eco-friendly refillable floss dispenser like quip is taking care of your teeth all you got to do is you got to you got to go to their website and subscribe they make it very easy they even send you uh you can sign up and get a new you know a new brush head and things every three months for just five bucks the shipping is free they have uh, teeth brushes for yes. for kids. Autopilot teeth brushes. Like I said, my entire family we're outfitted with Quip. Full Quip. <laughs> we are equipped with Quip. You got to check it out. You can go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, and you're gonna get your first refill free that I was talking about. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. It's spelled get q u i p dot com slash footballers. Quip, the good habits company. Foot Clan, you remember our friends over at Shady Rays, right? 
because we've talked about him for a while, but it's but it's been a it's been a bit. We were fans of Shady Rays long before they were a sponsor of this show because they are awesome. They're an independent sun, sunglass I company. I have way too many pairs that I've paid for. They don't <laughs> oh, they don't overcharge. They have the best warranty in all they they say all of eyewear. I say like all of everything. It, they'll replace your shades if they're lost or broken. I lost my shades in the Pacific yeah. Ocean. Yeah, you took a wave. I bye 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 shades and <laughs> and they will replace it. Doesn't matter what happens. Plus, they allow free returns and exchanges. They still manage to make quality sunglasses that are as good as any expensive pair I've worn. And most Shady Rays, they're 48 bucks. Also, I don't know if you guys know this. Shady Rays provides 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed. They've provided over 10 million meals nice. to date. They're great. So for our listeners, for the Foot Clan, they're giving us the best deal they have. It's a Black Friday level deal. Use the code FANTASY for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. The math checks out. It's buy one, get one free. And you can get two pairs of shades for 48 bucks. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com where you can find all the newest and best shades. All right, Aaron Rodgers, he's taken a few waves in when it comes to his fantasy value over the last few years. He's the quarterback 10 off the board right now. He's ranked lower on our consensus quarterback rankings. He's 12. I've got him at 12, Jason at 14, Mike at 16. It's not been a predictable ride with Aaron Rodgers. You get the extra. Uh, is it a chip on his shoulder? Is it a sign to where the door is? I don't know. Jordan Love being drafted was Another negative mark for Aaron Rodgers this offseason, but he is still Aaron Rodgers. He can still go out and give you that weak winning performance, just not coming as often. Yeah, I have him at 16. Uh, I hate it. I hate that he is that low in my rankings. I mean, is there uh, part of you that believes there, there, Rodgers could be a top? Five guy this year? Yes, it's, it's still inside of me, and I don't know if that's just you know, the, the goodwill. That Aaron Rodgers has built up of of so many years of being a dominant fantasy quarterback. I mean, you have the fact that he's like since 2011, he hasn't finished outside of the top ten when he's uh, when he's healthy and actually playing, uh, including he, last year. Yeah, yeah it, he was still number ten. He gave you four performances inside the top three, which I mean that, that's that's weak winning stuff. And you don't have to draft him where you normally would. I mean, it, uh, even as, a, as a fantasy owner, if my opponent has Aaron Rodgers, even though he's going late in drafts, I'm my butt's still a little clinched that week. Yes. I'm still pretty worried about what's going to happen. Well, you know that he can go nuclear, have a four touchdown game. He, you know, he still had three weeks, four weeks last year where he was a, a top, top three. three quarterback. Yeah. The problem, a great man once said that, Jason, the, and he, yeah, did, the, and he the, didn't the, have Devontae Adams for part of the year. Yeah, the, <laughs> amazingly, some of his best performances were with Adams. Yeah, that, it was weird. The that is are weird. weird. Um, yeah, I'm not super in on Aaron Rodgers. I, I have taken him when he falls into the double-digit rounds because you do have that upside. But I don't think you're going to have consistency. What we saw last year with LaFleur, I believe, is what's going to happen going forward. They invested in A.J. Dillon. They care much more about the running game and the defense than what we're used to seeing with Aaron Rodgers. You think, oh, I've got Aaron Rodgers. He's about to get you know the, the Russell Wilson treatment here of like, no, we're, we'll let you help us win a game when the game is on the line. But in the meantime, we want to control – uh, you know the 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 narrative of the game script with defense and and running the ball. I have a little mini game, a, little, a mini game. Yeah, it's not it's not as it's not as big as the other ones. But this this little mini game is called Aaron Rodgers or Jared Goff. Okay, the last seems very similar to the other games. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's it's mini. It's, well, there's only a few what, here. What? It's one question. But okay. I was thinking about this, and I, yes, it's one. Who question. finished higher last year? Over the last three years, so that's okay. including you know Aaron Rodgers. You know he yeah. had one down year. Obviously, he missed some games, but this is all per game. His completion percentage. Who's higher, Goff or Rogers. Aaron Rodgers? Rodgers. It's Goff. Yeah. yeah, Jared Goff. Those first two years with McVay was was a very high in completion okay. percentage. Yards per game, Goff or Rodgers? That's Goff. That is correct. It's Goff. Okay. Yeah. Touchdowns per game. Goff. Really? You think golf? I don't know. I'm just answering golf, Rogers. Bro. But it's golf. Okay. <laughs> higher, 
He shames you. You think it was Goff? Yeah. Mm, you dummy. Well, it was. Well, it was. You were right. Ah, I, got, I get you no matter what you say. All right. But obviously, Goff throws a lot more passes. Aaron Rodgers has always been Mr. Efficiency. Yes. Um, higher touchdown. This feels like a regular size game. Yeah. Hi higher touchdown percentage <laughs> per pass. So who throws a higher percentage of his passes for touchdowns? I'm not, remember I'm not Goff playing was this game beyond the mini portion. <laughs> sure. Who is it? It's Goff. I'm just saying, you know, look, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that's Rogers why he's still, ranked where he's ranked. I mean, he's. But Goff, I mean, Aaron Rodgers still allows a little bit more on the ground. Goff doesn't do much rushing the sure. ball, so you, you have a little bit of a baseline there. But my point is, I think we're looking at the previous Aaron Rodgers and saying he can get back. But I, it's this been is a while. three years. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. I don't, uh, are you happy with him as your as your locked and loaded? quarterback no I mean that's that's the question is are, are you drafting him to stream other quarterbacks are yes. you drafting him to play him every week I mean he was much much more valuable against bottom 16 yeah. defenses it was a huge gap 9.3 fantasy points different between facing a top 16 defense and a bottom 16 defense yeah he beat up on bad defenses but looking at the schedule Minnesota Detroit Saints Falcons yeah light him up so to start three the year. you have three plus matchups yeah with Aaron Rodgers out of the first four games. So, yes, I and he's going as the quarterback 10 in ADP. I imagine he's going to be all over the place when you're in your home leagues because you'll have the people who are still completely in on Aaron Rodgers, and then you'll have the contrarian leagues that are completely off of Aaron Rodgers. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to, to draft Aaron Rodgers if you're in a league where everyone is a late-round uh, subscribes to the late round theory, and you can grab Rogers late. I'm still interested to try it out for the first few games. He, he well, does he, have a really good schedule. The yes. whole not not just I mean he's got the buy in week five, but even after that he's got some good matchups. The first half of the year is pretty solid. Yeah, uh, one of the things that's interesting is yesterday on the Sirius XM show we talked about stack options. We mm -hmm. talked about what wide receiver quarterback combos are you most likely to end up with, willing to draft. If you have Devontae Adams, if you're in that spot where Devontae Adams falls to you, you didn't get to choose to draft his right. quarterback that's going to supply him all of those massive wide receiver numbers in the 10th round. Yeah, I, if I had Adams, I would be drafting Rodgers for that stack. So my stack uh, was this quarterback right here. Matt Ryan coming in at number 13. Matt Ryan is kind of, I, I don't feel like we haven't talked about him almost at all. And if I end up with Julio Jones in the top of the second round, I'm looking at Matt Ryan late in drafts as well. His start to last season was unbelievable. It was the first six games he was on a 5,300-yard pace and something like 40 touchdowns. So he has that in him. You know, We've seen it year over year. 2016, he was the number two overall quarterback. 2018, he was the number two overall quarterback. Last year, he was still in the top 12. He's finished at number 11. And he had a bad offensive line, and the, the team struggled. But look, Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, we expect big things from them. It's what? coming at as a result of Matt Ryan finding a way to get and them the he football. He did have an ankle injury. I, that It's often I, – I don't remember that Matt Ryan got hurt last That's year. That's why Matt Schaub had a top 40 week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a top – uh, top 12 week, <laughs> top 40. That's <laughs> not very good. Oh, yeah. Schaub has a top <laughs> 40 week almost every week. <laughs> okay, he, had a, he got hurt. Uh, and he did miss a game, and then you saw a a pretty noticeable downtick in his production. I, I'm not going to blame it all on the ankle because Matt Ryan does these things from time to time. But Matt Ryan has – I mean, he's had this cycle now where he keeps getting new offensive coordinators, and he's not great the first year. They, even with Kyle Shanahan, he was not great the first year that Kyle Shanahan was there. And then he burned everything to the ground the second year. Kyle Shanahan leaves. You have a new OC. He's bad. Then he's great again the next year. Now we have, and now we're back. On a, like we're back in that cycle where Matt Ryan still threw the fifth most passing yards in the league. He's going to throw a ton of yards. It's up to those touchdowns and interceptions. And the history of Matt Ryan. Not saying I'm, I'm not playing the game of. Well, he was bad last year, so that means he's going to be good. It's no, we have. We have an actual reason for that, and it's a change of system. Maybe Matt Ryan's just not – he can't adapt to the change that quickly because it's – the difference between Matt Ryan last year 
finishing where he where he did, uh, which was you know on QB eleven. So it was in fifteen games. Yeah, it was. It's fine for fantasy. But the difference between that QB eleven and him being a weekly starter as like a top seven guy, it's just two to three interceptions and two to three touchdowns. If you were able to flip those numbers, then Matt Ryan is great for fantasy purposes, and he can easily do that. You have to pay the QB eight though. So Jason, are you willing to to pay up a QB eight price for Matt Ryan in hopes that he can change those numbers? No, I'm probably not. And I and I do like Matt Ryan this year. Last year I was a little bit more down on him. I I would be very happy with Matt Ryan, but I'm not going to take him as the eighth quarterback off the board. Um, that's that's just higher than I think I've seen him going in a lot of real drafts I've been in. If he falls to value, gets near those double-digit rounds, I'd be happy with him. He does have a very difficult schedule. On the course of the season, Warren Sharp has him projected for the toughest mm. uh, uh, schedule against opposing defenses, specifically passing defenses. So that's something at least to monitor. But everything else you're saying is true. We know he's going to throw for 4,000-plus yards. He's going to demolish that. We know he's got weapons that are safe and secure. I think he's got an upgraded, hopefully, but I believe he it is still an upgraded running back from Devonta Freeman to throw the ball to. So I'm happy with Matt Ryan, but I'm not reaching for Matt Ryan. 14, shocker here. Probably going to have some debate. Daniel Jones ends up our consensus 14. Mike is the reason why. Mm -hmm. He's got him up at 12. I know he talked about some breakout opportunities. We also talked about the atrocious Early schedule for Daniel Jones. Pittsburgh, Chicago, San Francisco, the Rams. I look at Daniel Jones, and I think I see him through a similar lens to Gardner Minshew. Mike is apparently a big fan of you know these second-year breakout opportunities. I, don't, I wasn't as impressed with Daniel Jones as I think Mike was, and I don't think that this year is going to be an easy road for him. So I have him at 18. Mike's got him at 12. Jason Moore in the middle. How do you see this season playing out for Daniel Jones? Interesting pick last year by Dave Gettleman. <laughs> it it but, was. But, uh, you know, he, he certainly flashed and did some things that, you know, rookie quarterbacks traditionally haven't been able to do, but more of them are doing more recently. Uh, yeah, more of them are, but he still did things that people have not done over the last 10 years. Rookie quarterbacks that have played at least 10 games and averaged over 250 passing yards. That list is Andrew Luck, Baker, Cam, Jameis Winston, and now Daniel Jones. Like That's not a big list for over the last 10 years. He gives you enough on the ground. He was on a pace for uh, 365 rushing yards. That's not like incredible, but that's that Alex Smith, you know, removes a mistake or two because he gives you 25 to 35 yards uh, uh, on the ground. We've, we have 18 rookie quarterbacks who have thrown more than 20 touchdowns. Daniel Jones is fourth on that list. I, I, I saw ceiling games. Yes, he had a bit of a fumbling problem. He, the interceptions weren't too bad, but the, the fumbles... get the chance. I, I get it. But fumbles, to me, can be corrected for, for quarterbacks. It's easier to correct the fumbling problem than it is to correct an interception problem, in, in my opinion. He's surrounded by uh, elite... Speed, uh, you know, with with Slayton and Shepard and Evan Ingram, who is a, in, who is back, Sa Saquon, and yeah, and that's not even including Saquon Barkley. So I just I believe that Daniel Jones has the ability and the potential. It's it's a bit sketchier to call him the, the breakout, especially with that early season schedule. It could look really bad through four games, but I do believe that Daniel Jones is, has the ability and opportunity to break out And that's out the this right year. word, and I, I, I'm not a believer. Mike is a believer. I am not a believer. Uh, he had four outstanding games as a rookie. Detroit, it's, the Jets, the Redskins. Uh, Washington football team. Yes, the Washington football team, the Jets, Detroit, uh, and uh, the Buccaneers uh, early in the season when their their defense was bad. And and so does he have the, does he have the skill set and the weapons to go off? Yes. But outside of those games, there wasn't another top half. I mean, he's, he wasn't yeah. you know in the top fifteen the whole season. He was, he, and he was a rookie, and that's fine. But when I look at the talent, I don't. I'm not confident that I can project a leap forward. He's got a new coordinator, a new system, uh, shortened off season, tough opening schedule. He won't be on any of my I, teams. Yeah, I, I was going to say like to the point about like 
accomplishing certain metrics as a rookie. That's just a tough one for me fundamentally because one, a lot of rookies don't get the whole season. I, I'm of the impression that if you're a, a top pick, top three round rookie quarterback, and you get to start 16 games, you're probably going to do things that most rookie quarterbacks didn't do over the last 20 years because today's NFL with the scoring, with the protection of the quarterback, with all of the weapons and the schemes, I think more quarterbacks will do that. So I don't look at that as my only benchmark for him. Not saying you do. I know that he had big games. If you started him in week 8, 10, or 16, you won. Bravo, because yeah. I don't know how you had the guts to do it. But he you know, was winning you weeks and has all of his weapons there. So it's just about belief and whether you believe he has the opportunity to be that guy. For me, he's a potentially streaming option. Oh, I'd love to stream him in a really plus matchup. The weapons are there. We saw he can explode. I don't want him to be the guy, certainly at the beginning of the season or, or in any kind of mediocre matchup. Big Ben comes in at 15. What does Big Ben have left? He finished as the know, number man. three overall quarterback in 2018, but he all the question marks going into last year were built around what is Big Ben without Antonio Brown, and we don't have an answer yet. And now we have to a ask the question of what is Big Ben coming off an injury without Antonio Brown, and we don't have an answer yet. I, I do can, know I this. couldn't answer the first question, I and know. now you're asking I me know. more. What, do you got a third in there, huh, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> and the truth is... I'm not sure. I do know this. I have one answer for you. He's better than what they had in Pittsburgh last year. Mm, yes. I can guarantee it. Here's what I know that I can answer this question with. He's going in the 11th, almost 12th round, the 16th quarterback off the board, undrafted in some leagues. At that price, I am 100% willing to take the risk that Big Ben is healthy. Because if he is... And you're going to find out quick in New York in week one. Right. I mean, if, if he is yeah, He healthy, should crush the Giants. He will outperform that ADP without any problem. So I, uh, Big Ben is probably one of my m most favorite late-round picks this year. I, there, there are certainly worries. I mean, you, you just laid out some great questions. We, we haven't seen someone come back on this timeline from this injury. This is a baseball injury, not really a football injury. Here he has it. There's not a lot of experience. The The baseball timeline is longer, but he's already – he's throwing balls. He looks healthy right now in camp. And this is a good defense. That's the other thing that you need to bring into the equation. Not only is there the questions about injury and Antonio Brown, this is a defense that is back to the old Steelers way where Big Ben was more of a middle-tier fantasy quarterback because they – I mean, they almost made the playoffs last year with the – The worst offense I've ever seen. That's one way to put it. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. It was real, real bad. I, they, they and he legit, does have weapons with Juju and Deontay Johnson. I mean, outside of, outside of Josh Rosen-led teams, this might be the worst team I can remember uh, on offense last year. You have year a when, spot reserved for Josh Rosen-led teams? That's well, in its own category. Count. Yeah, they don't count. That's like, well, yeah, college football teams are worse. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it was the backups to Big Ben were – it just wasn't an NFL offense. And do so, you remember when point, you liked Josh Rosen? I do. I, I believe that I'm coming out it's of college, too bad. and I will say it's this. Too bad. It is too bad. I, w I will 100% admit my own faults, and I say all the time, I don't trust my own rookie quarterback scouting. Once they're in the NFL, I feel like I can hit, but there's so many I things you don't know. I wouldn't take too much that. blame on yourself when a player is drafted at the 10th overall spot by NFL GM. Well, you look at how many first-round I mean, round it's okay that you believe in a guy drafted bust. 10 overall. <laughs> I'm yeah. not. I'm only saying that because I remember the I hope in it. your heart, yeah. and I remember the the way you felt when that draft pick happened. And it was different than it. the way I felt. Yeah. Mm. But like you said, Josh Rosen, collegiate quarterback. Mm -hmm. Moving on, Cam Newton. We talked about him at the top. I have him at 19 right now. Jason at 21. Mike at 11. This is not the spot that Cam Newton will be in my rankings. If he, you know, a week from now, most likely. The solidified starting role of the of the Patriots with Cam Newton is not 19 for me. So he's kind of sitting here. He's being drafted with the same doubts that these rankings represent, which is QB 14, probably the starter, but I'm most people in mocks are just taking somebody else that they know is the starter. I think at this point, I mean, what it, give our listeners the percentage chance that Cam Newton is the starter in New England at this point. 
because we've done this a few times over the past few weeks. But uh, unless he gets a new injury, I would say a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm I'm right there. So I these rankings need to get adjusted a little bit. I the upside of Cam Newton with where you're going to have to draft him is tremendous. Now let let me put it this way, Mike, because you you said a hundred percent. You're on board with Cam. Mm -hmm. um, Matt Ryan sitting there in the eighth round. Cam Newton sitting sitting there in the eighth round. Both have upside. We've seen it. Who are you taking? I will take Cam. I will. I'll. I'll go for that. I, like, he's. We've seen the top five potential over and over, or not just potential. The the realization of being a top five fantasy quarterback. I believe that Cam Newton is healthy. He was. Uh, a victim of the the off season of the, this new COVID life, like he he got stuck in a in a really really hard place, had to take this deal from the Patriots, which I think will end up turning out into a very very good deal for Cam Newton. Uh, it, injury consultants on on Twitter they they're watching Cam Newton video and saying, look, he's healthy, he is he is good to go. You now you have all these. Running back concerns and like I was, oh, breaking news! Don't be Cam Newton news. No, this is kind of this is kind of just me having fun because players are playing football. But ESPN said Clyde edwards alaire was the feature back on Friday's practice. We have our first actual oh, practice. Yeah, our first actual practice report of there a player we go. taking reps in a specific spot. I know we're that, back. I know that wasn't really breaking news because we expect him to be, but you know what? Expecting something and having it take place in practice, we hadn't been able to validate things until I like right it. now. So I apologize no, for no, interrupting. No need to apologize. Self-validation like feels good. It yes, feels it does. great. Uh, so the, the question for Cam Newton is, he's been a lower volume passer in, ter in terms of passing yards. I know he, he's had a couple seasons where he's just gone off and he won an MVP, but historically, you know, like mid 3000 yards, but then you look at the Patriots system, this is it's the same exact question of Tom Brady going down to Bruce Arians system, which, you know, who's going to conform? Cam Newton going up to the Patriots system, does does Cam Newton now get an elevated passing yard baseline because he's working with Bill Belichick? I I just think that people they question the receiving core because they don't know who's actually going to come out on top. Julian Edelman's older. Nikhil Harry didn't show much. Mohamed Sanu didn't show much. They question that. But Cam Newton, of all quarterbacks, has been here before. Yep. We've he he his foundational receiver was Kelvin Benjamin for years in Carolina, where he was a viable fantasy option. Again, it still was Devin on Devin Funches. Yeah, these are not players that should really be. I mean, Kelvin Benjamin. Left he Carolina had, and he poof. Had his time. Yeah. yeah, he he was good because of Cam, not in spite of Cam. Right. He just disappeared from the league, basically. And so I just think that uh, the ambiguity adds to the draft capital uh, questions for the receivers and for Cam Newton in, in New England. By the way, when I have a bad offseason, <clears throat> I hope my contingency plan is to become the starting quarterback for Bill Belichick. <laughs> Fair enough. The offseason went so bad that he's the starting quarterback for the Patriots. But, um, the upside is tremendous for Cam Newton. And, you know, there's a reason Vegas made him one of the best odds at NFL MVP when he signed. That doesn't seem like something you would make that jump immediately. That's pretty but wild. Yet, but the storyline is there. You can see it in front of your face. Bill Belichick wants to prove as much as Tom Brady that it was him. <laughs> and to to speak and compare cuz I'm not I'm not quite as bullish on on Cam Newton. I do recognize he's always been good for fantasy. The rushing baseline, the rushing touchdowns will be there. I like him much more in in four-point passing leagues cuz he will have, you know, 5 6 7 rushing touchdowns, five, but six, probably be seven, eight. low 20s in the in the passing touchdowns. But one thing that has changed since I originally started Cam Newton is the Patriots defense. That you know, we we were just talking about how great the Steelers' defense is, and maybe that it hurts Big Ben. But they lost some pieces to the opt out on their defense, sure. Uh, and so that great, unfathomably locked down first half of the last year defense for the Patriots. That's not yeah what Cam's going to have. He might have to, and it started to fade over the back half of the year too with the the more difficult matchups. You're right. You're right. He might not have. I mean, how many opt outs have they had on defense? 
uh, three or four, but they're big. They're big yeah. names. Uh, Hightower, yeah. uh, Chung. Yeah. yeah, it's important pieces. Ryan Tannehill comes in at seventeen. Kirk Cousins at eighteen. Jason's the lowest on Tannehill at twenty four. What happened? You're saying because I left last year super high on Tannehill. Yes. What happened is he's lowered in one spot per day. <laughs> no. What, what happened here? It's just liking other players, it, I assume. A part of it is liking other players. Yeah, twenty three other guys. <laughs> But part of it, so I'm not, look, we talk about there's 40, you know, quarterbacks that, that can hit top 12. I, this is my quarterback 24 and I'm fine with Tannehill. I think he's okay. But when I went back. 24 in my ranks, number one in my heart. That's a classic I would cliche. say 24 in my ranks, 18 in my heart. <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, the, the reality is we have a, we have a very large sample of watching Tannehill play football. And last year his efficiency was fantastic he was a superstar he he was one of the best quarterbacks the entirety of his uh, season that he played from week seven on it's all the adam gase uh work he had right in his the, previous... re the release from adam gase uh, helps players so oh mercy the release from <laughs> adam gase well 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 um from the team yep. yeah from from uh the the control <laughs> so Um, but the reality is, I think that their red zone efficiency, uh, A.J. Brown's incredible ability to never be tackled after he catches the football. Uh, what about that Jonu Smith hype, man? We got look, some today. I, I like Jonu Smith. He's he's high up in my rankings. I think Tannehill is good, not great. And I think for fantasy purposes, um, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get good, not great. And I'm fine with Tannehill here but i i'm just not excited i don't expect him to keep the level of efficiency he had last really, season i'm really sorry <clears throat> that i brought up adam gase yes, on this show thank you unnecessary uh i the truth is is when ryan Tannehill was in miami there was off-season hype multiple times because of what he was able to do during uh, with stretches in miami yes. as a fantasy vi a viable i mean he finished eighth in yeah, a season it wasn't out of nowhere for Ryan Tannehill to me. We saw some progression before the Adam Gaze problems. Like Kirk so to go to yeah, Kirk Cousins yeah, yeah. here. Please. It it's tough because Kirk Cousins is very, very good. Like he, he is an excellent real life quarterback. They asked him to do way less last year. Now he came through with the efficiency of you know to Stephon Diggs, what was happening with all the the deep touchdowns. I don't know if they'll be able to Ask that little of him this year. This this is like that's the, why he's is, where I, he is in my ranking. This is the hope for Kirk Cousins is that. Well, I mean, <laughs> the hope for Kirk Cousins' fantasy outlook, not for Minnesota Vikings fans, but their defense. It it got exposed at the like the second half of last year. They just lost Griffin, who they were really hoping to bring back on the defensive line. Like their defense is going to be a problem, and if it is, if it really is a problem, if Coach Zimmer can't figure out how to piece it back together. Kirk Cousins is going to have to do more, and he can do more. He can be incredibly efficient. It reminds me of of the the Tony Romo years where – and what's funny, and Tony Romo never got the respect I thought he deserved at the quarterback position either. So with Adam Thielen, I think Kirk Cousins can be a solid you know, fringe QB1. I don't have him ranked anywhere there. I'm trying to paint the picture of – what could go right for Kirk Cousins? I'm not going to draft when they when they that. play an offense that's going to score a, a big, you know, against the Minnesota defense that is beat up. You can look to Kirk Cousins to get you a fantasy streaming performance. In my opinion, agreed. Uh, we need to get into best ball. I, I want to read the last two: Jared Goff, Gardner Minshew come in at 19 and 20. But then I want to throw this out on the table for you guys. Somebody ranked between 21 and 30 that you think has the chance to surprise at the quarterback position this year. And that group is Joe Burrow, Derek Carr, Baker Mayfield, Phillip Rivers, um, Jimmy G, Sam Darnold, Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke. I mean, these players will be started this year in certain matchups. Yes. But who do you think has the best odds of being a consistent week-to-week -week player? The, the guy that I'm most excited about from that list is Baker Mayfield. He's a post-hype sleeper. If you think about last year coming in, people draft him in the fourth round, the fifth right. round. Just, he had an incredible rookie season, adds Odell Beckham, and the sky's the limit. He was going to be a superstar. Dynasty drafts, he was you know in the first-rounder. 
And now all of a sudden he's left for dead. And the reality is if Odell Beckham was injured and the uh, the offensive line did get worse and now they've certainly improved that, th there's a chance he just bounces back and actually is a good quarterback. So I'm willing to take the shot on Baker. And I'm going to go Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow, if you ask me right now to lock Joe Burrow or Baker Mayfield into my lineup for the season, I will lock Joe Burrow in. He's got uh, a little bit of the ignored uh, Arizona-like situation in Cincinnati where you have a an up-and-coming, high-pass volume head coach, smart guy, A.J. Green, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, as reliable as they get, and then Joe Mixon out of the backfield that can give you value there. Um, I think Joe Burrow is going to have one of the best, if not the best, rookie season mm. for a quarterback that we've seen in some time. And for surprise, I would go to Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> I mean, it, one, because it would really be shocking, but just the the what he is set up with in Carolina with Matt Rule, I I really do believe that Teddy Bridgewater can surprise. Not a top five sure. surprise, but a, oh, I picked this guy up to stream him, and all of a sudden now I'm just playing him every week. I, what's amazing about these names as we move on, I can make a case for many more of them. I mean, oh, Philip yeah. Rivers, great opportunity. Derek Carr, great weapons, great opportunity. Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. You, I mean, he's he was decent, has good weapons. What about the number two quarterback over the those the final stretch of weeks? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Man, don't hold on tightly to your Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> pick, but it's nice when he's when he's playing. Yeah. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right, make sure you guys check out underdogfantasy.com. People have asked all offseason, my DMs on Twitter, where do I play best ball? Draft is gone. Well, the team behind draft is behind Underdog Fantasy. They mm -hmm. just debuted this app. It will be familiar to you. You will love it, and best ball is great. And so you need to check that out at underdogfantasy.com. And Mike is bringing us a best ball tip yeah, today. Well, and I want to remind people about the best ball mania for a chance at a million dollar in prizes. This is going on. on a million under, dollar, even. A million yeah, dollar. a in, million dollar in, bill. In, <laughs> you want that million dollar bill? You got to go Did to Did you the, see how much million dollar George Kittle got? Oh, he got a lot of million dollars. Yeah. yeah. All right, Mike. He got a few of them. We're done with you. Go on. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, look, when you're in best ball, to me, the best part of this is I can draft upside players, and I don't go uh, into the into the week and go, "Dang it! I knew I should have started them. I should have took them off my bench." And these are the players that make sure you have a plan to target these players. You know, you want to have a strategy. Not you're not just picking off your rankings. You're using your tiered rankings. Know who your targets are going to be in these later rounds, and I want to highlight specifically a few of these guys. Curtis Samuel, I talked about Teddy Bridgewater, I think, in surprise. Like Curtis Samuel last year, had uh, he was among the league leaders in air yards. He just had a quarterback who could not hit him. He was getting open. He just had really bad quarterback play. Brashad Perryman, he that's, a, that's a good look, one. Look, he showed enough last year at the end with Jameis Winston when he turned into uh, a waiver wire championship type of a player. Uh, Denzel Mims, their second round rookie for the New York Jets, look, he's injured. He's he's not practicing. Brashad Perryman is in. McCall Hardman, the one touch man, he is absolutely unbelievable. And the last name I want to highlight, it James Washington. He is completely left off the radar for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's going in the seventeenth round or later or undrafted. It might be nice. Well, to have Washington on your side here. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. But all the hype is Juju. It's Deontay Johnson. James Washington quietly produced as well last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers with the terrible quarterback play. It's possible that Washington really did level up his game. and Or at least in best ball will give you three or four weeks yes. of just, you know, Mark Tavis like weeks. Well, that's what that's what this. I mean, I love this list. And these are all double digit round wide receivers who you you don't have to pick when it's going to happen, but know that you should be targeting these players and have a plan when you're going to draft. How them. many games will McCall Hardman have a forty yard touchdown? Probably three, three, yeah, three or four. I, in my mind, it was four. How you, many will James Washington have? <laughs> no, no. My point is, how many will you start him for in your redraft league? Oh, zero. <laughs> Zero how many will you, yeah, how many sure. times will you get those awesome yeah. big plays monster scoring in best ball every single time? Yeah, I I think 
bringing Brashad Perryman's name up right now with the Denzel Mims hamstring injury, which happened today. I didn't mention it in the news, but it's more significant. Um, it's it's got no timetable right now. You're already a rookie. Perryman is probably being undervalued everywhere because mm-hmm. there aren't weapons in New York outside of him. I mean, Jamison Crowder has his role, but he's a slot receiver, and Brashad Perryman on the outside probably just completely ignored right now. Wait, you're talking about the wide receiver two the last month of the season? <laughs> Well, yes, That's what Jason. I mean, man. Yeah. You turned into a championship uh, winner. Sign up, uh, sign up for Underdog today. Enter the Best Ball Mania, as Mike said. You can win $1 million or dollar in prizes by yeah, going look. to underdogfantasy.com. No, the sky's the limit. You could turn that dollar into dollars. You Underdog could. Fantasy. All right. That is it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your weekend. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, somebody might have a little live stream popping up this weekend. Hey, Just now. saying. Just saying. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.